Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to PhotoBiz Live. As I said before, this is Andy from the PhotoBiz team, and today I will actually be presenting our webinar. As the slide says, we're going to be talking about understanding virality or viral online content. Just a reminder to everyone, if this is your first webinar, we do have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. You may submit your questions using the chat tool, and we will do our best to answer, I say we, I will do my best to answer all of the questions after the presentation. Uh, just bear in mind that if you have a question, feel free to type it in at any point during the webinar. I get a nice list of them, and I can catch up to them at the end. That way you don't forget your question mid-presentation. Uh, if you'd like, you can also join in the discussion on Twitter by using the hashtag PhotoBizLive. Uh, if at any point during today's webinar you have difficulty hearing me or seeing my slides, please use the comment box to let me know. I am recording this webinar and it will be available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash photobiz. As a reminder, you can find all of our recorded webinars on our YouTube channel. Okay, so as I mentioned, today we will be discussing viral content. Now, this is going to be a relatively short uh, webinar today, but that leaves plenty of time for questions at the end. So let's get underway. And there we go. There's my slide. Sheet. Okay. So first things first, let's just let's talk about viral content. Now obviously anything online can go viral. It can be a website, it can be a picture, it can be a video. Uh, so viral content is literally any piece of web content that spreads rapidly between users. Uh, like I say, it can be an image, it can be a meme, it can be a video, it can be a newspaper article, a story, a blog post. To be viral content, it's got to be rapidly spread and it must go from person to person. Now, the two main avenues this is going to happen is through emails and through social media. But those are the two key things. It's got to be fast, and it's got to be person to person. You know, we, we look at, you know, why does it have to be fast? Well, it's viral content works like a, you know, it's called that because it behaves like an actual virus. It spreads quickly, and it dies just as quickly. You know, you, you will see something for a week or two, and then suddenly it's nowhere to be found. Well, that was probably viral content. Uh, content is not viral until it spreads. Uh, this has happened where a post, a video will be, you know, up to a year or two old, and then someone finds it, a, an online influencer finds the content, shares it, and then it becomes viral. So it's not about when it's created, it's about when it starts to spread. Now, most viral content is usually very short-lived. It may be popular for a day or two. It may be popular for a few weeks. Uh, some things actually last a month or two, but eventually they all die out. Most viral content will be mocked or parodied. The Harlem Shake videos are probably one of the best examples of this. Uh, the Harlem Shake song went viral. People started making videos, uh, short 30-second videos, and it gained a lot of traction because not only was it easily digestible and funny, it was something that people could take and make their own. Uh, and that can actually extend the life of viral content if the online community, you know, this could be Facebook, it could be something specific like Reddit or uh, BuzzFeed, just any, any online site where people gather, they can extend the life of the viral content by making it their own. Okay, one of the things that a lot of people fail to grasp when we talk about viral content is why did it go viral? Well, content has to be shared for it to go viral, and content that evokes a high energy emotion is more likely to be shared. Therefore, viral content evokes high energy emotions. Now, when we talk about viral content, you'll notice we use a lot of grand sweeping assumptions, and that's because there is no single defining factor about what makes things go viral. So we really do have to look at correlation and then imply causation from that correlation. If you're familiar with any kind of research, you'll know that correlation does not always imply causation, but in some cases, like viral content, we really don't have an option. Okay, as we said, this is our feelings slide. You know, said it takes a high energy emotion to inspire people to share. So what is a high energy emotion? Well, it's you know, we'd like to think that they're positive emotions, you know, happiness, 
uh, joy, but it's not always positive. Uh, so the top three high energy emotions are anxiety, awe, and anger. Now, number one and number three, those are kind of hard to create content towards. You know, you don't necessarily want to make your customers anxious or angry unless you're focusing that anger on something external. Now, the second one, awe. Well, awe is where our word awesome comes from, as in something that inspires awe. And, of course, we want to make awesome web content. All kind of dovetails in. Now, the flip side is there are low energy emotions. Sadness and doubt are the two worst things your content can inspire if you want it to go viral. So if you're sharing a sad story, make sure it has a happy ending. Or find a way to tie that sad story into something that could happen to your viewers. That sounds a little sketchy there, but... These are what research has shown. Uh, the research comes from the University of Michigan. And if you imply that the same thing that happened in this story could happen to your readers, they're more likely to share your story rather than if you present a sad story with no happy ending. Uh, anything that makes your viewers doubt what they've done, that's also not going to be likely to be shared. Because people don't want to expose their doubts to other people. And that's something we're going to look at later. It's the benefit that people derive when they share your content. Okay, you know, we talked about feelings. What if you're not good with feelings? Well, the emotions are important. You know, they are, they are the shortcut to getting things shared. But not everything that goes viral is associated with an emotion. Sometimes they have cognitive impact. And what this means is it's something that requires a little bit more time to digest, but it makes you think, and it, it has an effect on what you do. So in order of effectiveness, our top three areas of impact are practical utility. Can I do something with this content? Uh, you may have seen uh, one, of the, one of the most popular forms of this online is what are called life hacks. And they're simple tricks that tell, you know, that, share a unique way to improve your life. Uh, the one that immediately springs to mind is taking the hangers, the clip hangers you get when you purchase clothing from a store, breaking the hanger portion off and keeping the clips and using those to seal up potato chip bags. You know, that was a, a life hack that I saw recently and obviously it was it was useful enough that it stuck in my mind and it's something that I remember. The second one is something interesting. Something that's going to catch my interest or bring something new to my attention. Now, this one's a little bit harder to shoot for because what interests you may not interest everyone else, but that's okay. And the third impact is surprising. Now, you are probably incredibly familiar with this tactic if you spend any time online. The five surprising steps to look better in your bathing suit. This one tip makes dietitians hate him. The five most surprising animals from Australia. It's well known that if you catch someone by surprise, they are, again, they're very likely to be interested in it, but they're also likely to share it because it's that sense of learning something that they then share with someone else. Okay, so you're writing your content, you're creating your video, but you accidentally wrote three pages. Well, this is actually not a bad thing. When we look at text content, you know, your blog post, your information page, your story of a charity helping someone you love, the more you write, the more likely people are to share it. And the reason behind this is that with emotional topics, People want to establish their position. They want to be able to show people why they think the way they do. Uh, this is really, really beneficial on hot-button topics. Uh, politics, for instance. If you're an American, we've been talking about Obamacare a lot lately. But what you'll find is that beyond the screaming headlines of great success or horrible failure, content that gets shared 
tends to be on the longer side and it will go more in depth about why this is either the greatest thing on earth or the worst thing ever conceived. And that's because people don't want to come off as just being a mouthpiece for someone else. They want to show you that they have well-informed decisions and their positions are based on facts and logic. So if you want to touch on a hot button topic, something that is near and dear to you, something that evokes strong emotions, either positive or negative with you, make sure that you're establishing your position. Make sure that you're not, you know, short things grab headlines. Thought out positions earn shares and engagement. Now the flip side of this is the longer the piece is, the less likely people are to comment on it. Uh, that's mostly because it takes longer to digest and comments tend to be more off the cuff. So you do walk a tightrope here between having a piece that's long enough to well establish your position and be something that someone wants to share and keeping it short enough that they can engage with you. Uh, a nice middle ground can be having a long blog post about the topic and then writing a short teaser on your Facebook page so people can comment on your Facebook post and share your blog post. And then, and I say that, and I say it in that way because it's a sketch that people of my generation, if they watched a certain television show when it aired in the 90s, may be very familiar with. If you're not, you have no idea what I'm talking about. And that brings us to the point about humor. Humor is about as close to a universal trait of viral content as you'll ever find. Things that are funny tend to get shared more often than things that aren't. Even though 60% of ads are created by Fortune 500 companies, 62% of viral content are created by small businesses who have made things funny. Uh, an interesting uh, piece of that kind of hit both there is Goldie Blocks, a company that makes engineering-based toys targeted towards girls, ran an ad where they took a Beastie Boys song and changed the lyrics and put it to a video. Well, it was shocking because it was a very familiar tune with completely different words, but it was also humorous because of the, the way they subverted the expectations of the viewer. Now, Humor is much more important to a small business, gener uh, generally because you've got a smaller budget. You're you're trying to do more with less. You know, a large company they can they can afford flashy graphics, big name actors, the tricks that come with making content. When you're a small business and you don't have the time or the money to hire an ad campaign or an ad company, rather. Having a funny post can do can go a long way where trying to create something over the top and spectacular can end up looking cheap and tacky. Now, there are two really easy ways to look at comedy and humor when you're creating viral content. The first is cheap comedy. Cheap comedy are your bodily emission jokes. They can be like slapstick. If you've ever seen some of the internal videos we do here where we show off what it's like to be inside PhotoBiz, you'll notice that we do a lot of goofy things, things that you may not really understand why we're laughing so hard, but everybody in the office cracks up at them. Uh, in our new video for our, uh, I believe it's called our Passionate Support video, it's our video that's, uh, it's our trailer for our YouTube page. Uh, during one of the scenes, you'll notice myself and my office mate Vance, and Vance is playing with a Nerf gun. And you'll see that Nerf gun in just about everything because it's a good, cheap joke. You can shoot people with it. It makes a great sound. You know, it's, it's a photo biz thing. Now, it's also this other option. It's an inside joke. You know, there are, there are things that we say in the office that outside of the office make absolutely no sense. Uh, just today, Joanne, one of our other presenters, reminded me of the phrase work broccoli, which was something I said. Now, to those of you listening, you're scratching your heads saying, I have no idea what he's talking about. You know, what is work broccoli? Well, like I say, that's an inside joke. Now, 
inside jokes can be useful, especially if you have a very targeted audience. You know, it can be something that's only funny to somebody who's from your area. It might even be something funny that you've got something in your office that only somebody who's been to your office would know about. Inside jokes are really useful because they make people feel like they're a part of something. And when they share those things, they are bringing more people into the fold. So when you're looking at ways to make viral content, pick an inside joke. Pick something that only photographers get. Pick something that only people from Greensboro, which is where PhotoBiz is located, or only people from North Carolina. Uh, I'm sure you've seen those. You know you're from insert location if, and then there's a list of 10, 15, 30, 50 things that only people from your area will get. Now, you don't necessarily have to create viral content. Let's say you find one of those lists and you say, well, yeah, I agree with almost everything there. Share it yourself. Don't take credit for it, but make yourself an area where people can find that themselves and then share it from your page. Next, the double-edged banana peel. Uh, if, if you've ever attended my webinars in the past, you know I tend to put bad jokes in my titles, and this is about the best I could come up with today. So if you're trying to make a funny piece of content, take a step back. There are three ways it can go. It can be intentionally funny, it can be unintentionally funny, or it might just be funny to you. Now, I get the feeling most of my jokes fall into number three, but as I've, uh, as I've had to admit, my shtick is the bad jokes, so I'm just going to keep plugging away at them. And hopefully you'll come along with me. If you don't, that's okay. But what it breaks down to is the first two will get you shared. If it's intentionally funny, people will share it. If it's unintentionally funny, they're also going to share it, but maybe not the way you wanted them to. Uh, one of the best examples I can think of of this is Rebecca Black's song, Friday. If you've never heard the song, I cannot in good conscience tell you to listen to it because it's a bad song. Uh, Miss Black herself reviewed her song two and a half years later, and the video ended with her, with her head in hands just waiting for it to end. Now, this falls under the there's no such thing as bad publicity. But you don't necessarily want to be known for having the ad that was very funny because it was so bad. You may have experienced these in your own life. Uh, these have a nasty habit of escaping the Internet, and actually, I suppose you could even say they predate the Internet. Uh, we've all seen the local company that decided they needed to run a video or a radio ad, and their budget did not quite live up to their, uh, to their ideas, and so you get really bad commercials that become famous, not because of the product, not because of the company, but because of how bad the ad was. Now, like I say, if you find yourself in this position, often the best thing to do is embrace it, say, my culpa, my fault, and roll with it. Take the exposure you've gotten and try to turn it into a good thing. Uh, the worst thing you can do is try to stop content from spreading, because that will generally make it spread faster. That online has its own name. It's called the Barbara Streisand Effect because Miss Streisand attempted to get some content removed, and the act of trying to get the content removed resulted in the content becoming more and more popular. Uh, I, again, this may be an, something for those of us who spend a ridiculous amount of time online. Uh, Beyonce's PR firm tried to do this with a couple of uh, photos from her concert, which it caught the singer mid-word, and her face was rather funny when you looked at it. And again, her PR firm tried to get the images removed from the Internet, which of course made the Internet upset, as it's wont to do, and the pictures became even more shared. Okay, so at this point, we need to stop and take a look at something. Viral content happens because of the way people react to it. So nothing and no one can ever guarantee viral content. 
unless you have a budget in the multi-million dollar range, at which point you can force it down enough people's throats that it will get shared eventually. But what it breaks down to is there's no magic formulas and there's no step-by-step -step instructions anyone can really give you to creating viral content. You know, we, you've uh, even here we've tried it. We've had ideas we thought were going to be great. We expected them to take off, and they petered out. And at that point, all you can do is take it as a lesson back to the drawing board, which is another point to remember. Because nothing is guaranteed with viral content, don't pin every hope you have on one piece of content going viral and making all the difference. It's something you can try for, but it should be part of a greater whole rather than everything relies on this going viral. A couple of tips if you do want to create some viral content or it can help you recognize viral content so you can get on board with it before everyone else does. Personalize the content. Now, it can be personal to you. It can be your uplifting story. It can be your horrible faux pas. Or it's something that will resonate with your audience. But it needs to be personal to someone. You want to reduce the consumption time. You want a blurb that immediately tells people what they're getting. Or you want it to be something they can look at very quickly and understand. Lists are quick and easy. The, there's a couple of websites, uh, BuzzFeed and Cracked, are two of the biggest names, and they're well known for this. They're websites that use list formats to drive engagement. Cracked's method is the top number of surprising, shocking, interesting ways of doing verb. And it's almost like a Mad Lib style way to create content. You just plug a couple of things in, and you roll with it. It's quick, it's easy, and when it works, it works really well. When it doesn't work really well, well, you only spend a day on it, so it's easier to write off. One of the great things is to provide a benefit for someone to share. Now, it can be something as simple as being part of the joke. You know, uh, 10 depressing ways to know you're an NC State fan. Uh, if anybody out there is an NC State fan, our football season just wrapped and you know my pain. For those of you who don't, well, maybe you kind of, you know, that may have, you might want to know what Andy's talking about. You know, why is he saying he's very sad to be a, a State fan? Well, now maybe you'll look up their website and look at our schedule and our record and understand why I have to hang my head in shame when I'm in the office. You, you want to make them feel like they're part of something. Contributing to a charity. Now, it doesn't have to be actual money donations. It can be just share this if you support X. But let them feel like they're contributing to a greater whole. Uh, one of the third ways is to allow them to self-identify. It can be things like human rights. It can be supporting a dog breed. I have uh, several friends in my personal life who are big advocates for pit bulls. You know, they do pit bull rescues, they do what they can to educate people and kind of demystify the quote unquote aggressive dog breeds. Again, it's you know, there are people I know because this is what they share. And I also know that a website, if they post some content about how pit bulls are great nanny dogs, I guarantee five people on my friends list will share that within six hours of one another because it's something they identify with. Now, this last point's kind of, you know, it's pretty basic. Make it easy to share. Don't don't make it so they have to go through a convoluted process to let other people know. Have a share button, you know. Post it on your Facebook page. Post a link on your Facebook page. Let them share that post, not necessarily the full link. The easier you make it for people to share, the more people will share. Okay, uh, this viral checklist, I just want to be clear up front, uh, it was from a blog post on Moz.com by a gentleman named Carson Ward from ClearLink Marketing. So I want to make sure that as much as I'd like to claim credit for this, this is not mine. This is a piece of shared content, which is, again, appropriate for our topic. So, checklist to go over. 
did you sufficiently cover the topic? Is it long enough? Obviously, you may not. This may not be applicable to you. But if it's text-based, did you explain yourself well enough so that you don't sound like you're preaching to the choir or a lunatic who is shouting on a street corner? Does the content inspire a high energy emotion? Awe, anger, and anxiety being our top three. Now that one can that can be either the easiest or the hardest portion of this. If you are passionate about a topic, it is much easier to inspire these high energy emotions than a topic where you know it inspires these emotions in other people, but you're relatively ambivalent to the topic. Does your tone convey emotion? One thing that uh, can shut down viral content before it begins is when you sound like the only reason you're doing this is to create viral content. You don't want to be very formal in your writing or even very business-like, again, unless your audience is businessmen. You want to be emotional, emotional about your topics. Uh, the next three, is it practically useful? Is it interesting? Is it surprising? Now, ideally, you'd like it to be all three. These five surprising ways to improve your health without leaving your couch. Well, that's something that's going to ding a lot of bells for a lot of people, probably going to get shared. But again, that's the descending order. We want to be useful. If we can't be useful, we want to be interesting. If we're not interesting, we can at least be surprising. And finally, if it's supposed to be funny, is it actually funny? Are your friends just being nice? Sometimes it can be hard to get a, to get a real look at how good your content is. You need to be able to identify those people that will look at your video and say, I love you, but this is bad. Or the ones who, who can say, well, yeah, that's really funny. Or have you thought about maybe changing this? Once you identify those people, hold on to them tightly, buy them coffee, do whatever it takes to stay on their good side. Because somebody who can honestly critique your work is a very valuable resource in this game. All right, so uh, like I said, we're not uh, not a huge topic today. Wanted to leave plenty of time for questions. Uh, like I say, ask me anything. And if uh, if you really want to know, I'm happy to give away my braised beef recipe because, again, uh, like my list, it's something that I got from a friend. Uh, how can this apply to video? Well, that's an interesting question, James. Mostly, this, all of these topics apply to the video. You know, you want to, when you make a video, you either want it to be funny or useful. You know, if... If you're looking to, let's say, for example, create a viral video for photographers, you could do a, an interesting way to set up an entire studio in five minutes. Or you could do a funny behind-the-scenes video, you know, apply some music to it, uh, maybe a comedic uh, announcer voice over the top. The the things that make good content are always they, they apply across the board. Uh, viral videos are actually the most well known type of viral content. Uh, like I say, I mentioned the Rebecca Black Friday video was shared because of how bad it was. Uh, the Harlem Shake videos were something that anybody could do, and a lot of people place their own take on it. Uh, probably the most well known worldwide example of viral content is size Gangnam style which took a man who was famous in his home country and made him an international superstar uh, music videos tend to be the most popular way to go viral because music tends to work out better you know people can listen to it in the background they don't have to put their full attention to it but you still you want to keep things you want to keep the same principles in mind you know you want to evoke some emotion you want to make it easy to digest, and you want to make it funny if you can. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, everyone, for your question. <laughs> and thank you, for everybody, for joining us today. Uh, just a reminder, a recording of today's webinar will be posted on the PhotoBiz YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash PhotoBiz. Also, be sure to check our blog at blog.photobiz.com and watch your email for updates about future webinars. 
Uh, next week, we will be having two webinars. The first will be high volume and high end with Mike Fulton from Tricoast Photography. Next Tuesday, December 10th, and then uh, one of our newest members of the Passionate Support Team, Jaleel, will be presenting a webinar on the difference between HTML5 and Flash next Thursday, December 12th. That concludes this episode of PhotoViz Live. Have a great day, everyone.